So today I wanted to talk to you guys about building better arrangements, better sound selection, might even get into some sound design, but I wanted to do all of this from a frequency standpoint. And I wanted to show you guys that if you understand the frequency spectrum, it's really going to help you be a lot more efficient and productive as a producer. It will help you avoid overproducing. It'll help you avoid adding sounds that are clashing with each other. And then you're trying to fix these problems in your mix. And I, I really feel like when I came to this understanding myself, it really helped me get a lot more done. It helped me get it done a lot faster. I got better results as a producer. And, and the way I come up with these topics is I tend to be in the studio all week or with students all week. And when somebody comes up with a question or I see like a common theme at the end of the week, I just want to address those things for you guys. Put this out into the air. Hopefully it helps you guys out with your productions, with your mixes. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this. If you're not new to this channel, you've probably heard me call myself a minimalist before. And it's just another way of saying I'd like to be efficient. And, and that means as a producer and as a mix engineer. And this video is really going to help explain as to why that is. It's because when you understand things from a frequency spectrum standpoint, you can pick better sounds that work well with each other, that don't clash with each other. And so by the time you get to your mix, you could be doing a lot more mixing and less fixing and be a friend to your future self. And that's if you're doing the mix yourself, even if you're passing these mixes off to a mix engineer, they'll be a lot happier with your productions and the process will go a lot smoother. You, you guys, you'll be doing a lot less surgical EQing and a lot less trying to like force sounds to fit with each other and they'll just naturally fit well together better because they're all doing a different job. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. First and foremost, I have a production here. And again, if you guys are not new to this channel, I do my productions and arrangements in Logic Pro. But let's not think of this from a DAW standpoint. Let's not even think of this from a genre standpoint. This happens to be like a pop reggaeton type of production. I do a lot of international music. But again, we're not thinking about DAWs. We're not thinking about genres because when we're talking from a frequency standpoint, that's all kind of irrelevant. We just need to understand where things should sit within the frequency spectrum. If we understand the frequency spectrum better, it will help us to build better productions and arrangements, which would lead to better final results, better mixes. So let's get into this production. Again, this is something I made with my guy Hans Nobi. It's like a pop reggaeton type of production. As we're going through this production, I will have our Fab Filter EQ here on the master channel so we can see where every sound instrument is sitting within the frequency spectrum. And I'll explain the decisions that I made as we're going, and then we'll just break this whole thing down even further. And as you can see on the EQ, I already have like a low cut here and I have a high cut here, but it, those are muted and we're gonna get into that as well. That's something in the industry called the NS10 trick, but I do happen to have NS10s here in the studio, but you don't need NS10s. That's why this is called the NS10 trick and I'll explain why this is even a thing and why NS10s are like a legendary staple kind of monitor in every studio. But first things first, Let's just play this production and analyze it here on our EQ using a Fab Filter Pro Q. So these are the melodies that Hans initially sent me. You see like everything's like very thin, not much sub, but our sub bass gets introduced here. I wanted to add some body and some weight as the production is building up. No drums yet. Our drums still getting introduced here but there's like a drum filter automation as it's building. So we got a lot more groove here. Our, it starts to fill up our whole frequency spectrum. And then of course, when we get to the chorus, we get everything, right? A lot more fuller on the low end, of course, but you have your top, you have your little counter melodies, you have your chords, and that's sort of filling up the whole frequency spectrum, right? makes the production sound nice and full. So let's listen to this production again and mainly focus on the chorus section when it's at its fullest. And we'll do that going over this NS10 hack kind of trick that I told you I would explain to you guys. And let's first of all, to understand the NS10 hack, we have to understand why the NS10 is still a famous legendary speaker, still a studio staple at major studios, even though it's a completely old discontinued speakers that we've probably had around since the 70s and 80s. So of course these things have had a lot of major hits mixed on them, but besides that, 
from a frequency standpoint, they tend to highlight the mid range of your mix. And what do I mean by that? I look at a mix as, or a production as the low end, the lower mid, the upper mid, and the highs. And that's the way we tend to look at the frequency spectrum, right? By the way, this quick little frequency spectrum guide is directly from my book, Four Horsemen, a mixing and music production available on Amazon. If you don't have it yet and you guys wanna go check that out, the link is always in the description. But again, we tend to look at the frequency spectrum for four different ranges, right? And we have our lows, which is going to be our subs, our 808, our bass, our bottom. And then when we start to get into the 100 hertz, even before the 100 hertz, our kick drum is probably going to sit around from somewhere around 70 to 90 hertz. And that's where we're going to get our big kick drum hit. And then as we move up the frequency spectrum, we have other instruments that are starting to be introduced. And then we have our vocals around the 5K. That's where we're going to get our vocal presence. And then above all that on our top end, we have our shine, our air, our high end stuff like hi hats, cymbals, all that top end information. But if we have a full production, it's going to fill up the whole frequency spectrum. And that's what really makes it feel full, right? So again, getting back to the NS10, the NS10 is going to highlight the mid range, which is like the meat and potatoes of your mix, right? And I'll show that to you guys in a second as to why that is. And if we're focusing on the meat and potatoes, the lower mid range, the upper mid range, it tends to translate better when we're talking about iPhones, when we're talking about laptop speakers, when we're talking about car stereos, when we're talking about clubs, when we're talking about all of these places where music will be played, a great mix is when the mix translates well in all of these different places, right? So again, let's play this production where it's at its fullest, which is the chorus part. And the NS10 hack, let's say we even shave off up to 200, right? On the low end. And then at the top, we're shaving off at about 5K. So we're shaving off a lot, right? But this is what I mean by the mid range is the meat potatoes of your mix. Now, if we go below 200, we're only getting that big base bottom information, right? And then if we go above 5K, Now we're really just talking about that air, that shine up top. But again, it's not the meat and potatoes of your mix, right? Now, if we go back to the mid range. That's where the bulk of your information is sitting, right? Especially if we're listening on something like an iPhone, it's not going to have a lot of bass. The newer iPhones, newer phones, uh, the speaker information, it's getting a little bit better. You can hear a little bit more bass and on the Mac laptops as well. But again, our meat and potatoes here is gonna be in our mid range. So when we're doing our NS10 hack, we just wanna highlight these parts of the mix and double check our mix with this NS10 hack on, right? So now that we understand the frequency spectrum a bit better, let's get into this production a little more and I'll explain step-by-step step how I make some of these choices. In the beginning, when we're at our verse, we have our chords again, and I'm just tracing our chords with the root note. And from a music theory standpoint, let's say this, this record is in G minor. So our first chord is going to be G minor. So the root note of that would be G. So then that's what I would put my sub at. So we have our sub tracing the root notes of each chord. And this is a sub I designed on Logic, on a Logic Stock VST called the ES2. I've gone over this. I've done a full video about it. Low-end mixing secrets, if you guys want to go back a few weeks. And it dives a lot deeper into that. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I kind of did a whole video on it already. But I, again, I just traced the root notes of those chords using this sub that I made on a Logic Stock VST. It just really fattens it up. It gives me the low end as the record is building up. It also adds a lot more drama when you add that type of big fat low end. If you're listening to this in a club or in the car, when you can really like experience that low end.
And then we get into our drums. I did a lot of layering here on the drums as well. I was excited about getting into this part. I love layering drums. I love programming drums. It's like my thing. So let's get into this. I just want to highlight the drum section here. This is our entire drum groove. We also have a little fill down here. Okay, cool. So let's do these sounds one by one. This is our kick. Let's look at this kick on our pro cue on the master channel. So of course, again, our kick is going to be bumping at around 80 Hertz. We know that now from having a better understanding of the frequency spectrum. So I'm getting that bump from this kick, but this kick also does have a little top and a little punch as well. And then I'm getting my reggaeton loop. Some of these sounds I might have EQ'd already and printed. So don't worry about the fact that it looks like I didn't even mix these sounds. The reality is that a lot of these sounds I might recycle in different productions as well after I design them. So I could have imported it from a different production where I already mixed these sounds, bounced it down to audio. But again, let's look at this from a frequency spectrum standpoint. Of course, this reggaeton loop is going to fill up the frequency spectrum a lot more. But as you can see, I probably thinned out the bottom to make space for our kick drum. We're getting that bump from the kick drum. But this reggaeton loop has some hats in there, some snares, so it's filling up the rest of the frequency spectrum. It's really being, it looks like it's being really highlighted here around the 240 mark. So if I or take that away, see how it thins it out. So the meat and potatoes of that loop is around there. Could emphasize that or take it out. But again, I probably already did some EQing on this and bounced it down. Then we get our snare. This is kind of like a trap 808 kind of snare. It's probably just going to give my snare a little bit more of a transient. It's so thin. It's not really, I'm not looking for body there. I probably just wanted more of the transient in. I wanted the, the snare to stick out a little more. So that's giving us a little more top and a little more transient on the snare. Then I also have this little afro rim. So that's the gist of our entire drum groove, right? And again, if we're looking at this, from a frequency spectrum standpoint, it, it's already pretty full, but then we also have space up top. And then we introduce our shakers. Now we have a full drum groove here, right? And then when we get to our chorus and we introduce the bass and the subs, I also did some layering there. So this is our original bass. Again, on the ES2, I designed a lot of these basses from scratch using FM wave here. And then this is a bass guitar VST called Bass Fingers. This one is from Waves. I think I just wanted the guitar tone so it can sound more like a live guitar versus then just sounding like an 808, but I wanted the bottom from the 808. So I'm getting the guitar tone and the 808 bottom. And let's see how we did that here. So of course my 808, I'm not cutting a lot off the bottom. I am cutting a lot off the top though. This makes space for my other bass layer. And then here's my other bass layer. As you can see, I cut off a lot off the bottom. We're at 62. You can cut a lot off the bottom here because again, we just want more mid-range information from this. And another thing I've mentioned here before on the channel is as I'm building up my production from a frequency standpoint, I also like to think about the imaging aspect of it. Like, the lower subs, I can mono them. And as I'm going up the frequency spectrum, we can expand them. And I probably did that here with the direction mixer. So our bass, I mono down. And I 
mono down here as well this is plays like it's kind of like a multi-band imager here on logic it's called the direction mixer but you have a split and a crossover so our crossover is at around 550 so everything below 550 is getting mono down to about the same place that our sub is getting mono down but then everything above 550 is is keeping our stereo spread right and i do that as we go up the frequency spectrum this is also again directly from my book four horsemen a mixing and music production we do have a panning and imaging guide in the book as well where we go over things like this so now we have our drum layers our bass layers have these little counter melodies little guitar melody and then these are the original stems that han sent over and that's the gist of our production here right let's look at where these melodies and these synths and everything are sitting within the frequency spectrum now that we've gone over the drums and the bass Let's see where all these other melodies are sitting. Let's turn on our NS10 hack again. So they're really just sitting, filling up that mid-range space, right? They do have a little bit of top shine, but not much. Let's highlight this vocal sample now. Where's that sitting in our frequency spectrum? That's more on the top end, of course. So it's really complementing our chords, sitting on top of our chords. So again, let's let's in, let's do this, but introduce our low rent and information. So we're getting our bottom now, introducing all that low-end information. Let's open EQ back up. Introduce our drums. Introduce some of these other melodies I have here. And now we have a full production, right? And again, when you have all those sounds sitting within their own space on the frequency spectrum, they're not fighting against each other, not clashing with each other. They're doing individual jobs, playing their individual roles and working well together like as a team. That's the way I like to think about it. We have a nice, clean production. So when we get into that mix phase, it'll be a lot easier and we probably have a lot less to do there, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned something. Again, a lot of the things we just went over is in the book, Four Horsemen, a mixing and music production now available on Amazon. The link is in the description. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Coast of Sound TV. Go!